Today we're talking about if-else branches. All right, so let's just get into it. Using branches in your code will allow you to execute certain statements when a specific condition is met. You'll do this by using an if. Uh, using an if branch will open up your program to just many more possibilities in comparison to what we've seen so far. So let's create some variables, and we're going to be using these throughout this video. And we're going to throw an example at you right away because I think this is the best way to understand what's going on here. So in this example, we're just checking if the user is tall enough in inches to ride the roller coaster alone. So what we would do is we would check, is the user height at least 48 inches? So there's a good way to do this, but the way I'm going to show you is if user height is greater than 47, I'm doing it this way because I feel like it's a little easier to digest at first, then we're going to print you are tall enough to ride alone. And then we'll just do that and we'll fix that. And notice here that we have two curly braces. We have the one that opens and the one that closes and you have to do this for the if statement. This is saying anything inside of these curly braces needs to happen. Technically, I think you could actually just, uh, let, me, let me check just because I don't want to lie to you. I think you could just do this and it would technically work. Yeah, this would work. So you don't need the, the braces if you just have one line, but practice good practice <laughs> and use the lines, uh, use the, the braces like that. Okay, now you can also have more than one if statement. So what I mean by that, I think the best way to show this is yet another example. <laughs> so in the following example, we'll actually be using the equality operator, which is just equals equals. And we'll be talking about how many slices of pizza do we want. So example two, how many slices of pizza do you want? So if pizza slices is equal to one, then this dot print, dot print line, you get a slice of pizza. And then we'll just close that. And then if pizza slices is equal equal to two, then system dot out dot print line, you get two slices of pizza. If pizza slices is greater than two, so if it's three or more, then this is not the print line. You were too greedy. You only get one slice of pizza. I am a very punishing person. You may not ask for too much pizza. Don't do that. All right. So let's just take a look at this. N now notice it, how if you want no slices of pizza, nothing happens at all. See, so one, two, and greater than two. But what about zero or negative pizza? I don't know. You give me pizza. I don't know how that works. That won't cause an error when nothing, just nothing happens. Nothing happens at all. And that's totally fine. So just wanted to let you know that. So let's revisit the first example involving a roller coaster. On many roller coasters, if you're at least 36 inches tall, you can ride the coaster with an adult. So let's look at uh, example three. Are you at least tall enough to ride with a chaperone? I spelled chaperone wrong. I don't know how to spell it. We're just keeping it that way, okay? So if user height is greater than 47, and I keep capitalizing the I. It's a lowercase i and if, by the way. Then it says not that print line, you are tall enough to ride alone. And we'll close that brace. Now, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, what if they weren't greater than 47 inches, right? Well, here's where else if comes into play. So if this works, this doesn't get checked. All right, I, I hope that makes sense. So if this works, if, if it's 48 inches, 1,000 inches, a billion inches, this happens and this does not because this says else. So else means this needs to fail. This must fail for this to even be considered. All right, so this did fail. We'll say that we're 36 inches, right? We'll say we're uh, 36 inches tall. So it says we're not above 47. So are we at least above 35? And if we're 36 inches tall, yeah, we are. So this is not the print line. You may ride with an adult chaperone. And we'll close that. And now there's one more thing for branching that you need to know about, and this is very important as well. That's else. So this is saying if both of these fail, just like think of it this way, like it must go in order. So for this one to go, this the second one, if this one this one needs this first one to fail. This else, this final one, needs both of these to fail. It, they both must fail for this to even be considered. Notice that this one doesn't have an if. This is just else and then brace. So why is that? Well, that's because this is saying else. This is a catch-all. This is saying everything else. 
do this. So let's go ahead and put this now to print line. You are too short to ride. And then we'll just close that. And that's all it is. So this is saying if you're 48 inches or above, then you are tall enough to ride alone. Or if you're not at least 48 inches, if you're at least 38, uh, 36 inches, then you may ride with an adult. Otherwise, if you meet neither of these conditions, then you must be too short to ride because every other case is handled. And now every case is handled here. And there you go. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments. So using else if and else just gives you much more control. And I don't know how else to say it. Like that, it just gives you so much more control compared to what you've learned up to this point. The difference between else if and else is that else is basically saying if the previous conditions didn't work, the program just should check to see if this else if condition is met. Generally, an else without an if after it should go at the end of your branch sequence. An else statement is a catch-all that does something when all the preceding if and else if conditions are not met. So that's why you, you, you just want the else to go at the end because if you put else here, if I put an else here, this else never gets seen. Ever, 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 ever. As a matter of fact, you can see syntax error on token else. It, it, this is saying, what are you doing, dude? You've already got an else. You can't put a second else. Just else always goes at the end, pretty much. All right, now. Let's take a look and I think that pretty much covers it all actually. So I'm gonna give you a practice problem. Try creating if else branches to make the following problem work. So create a program that determines if a credit score is high enough to get a new credit card. Assume the credit card requires a 700 score or higher, so 700 or above, for automatic approval and 620 or higher for a manual review. Also, anything below 620 should just be an automatic rejection. So you'll need this variable right here, int credit score. And I put int because it just makes it a lot simpler. And your code would go right under that. So I want you to go ahead and solve this. Like, try to make a system that accounts for the automatic approval, for the manual review, and for anything below 620. And you just print that out. Print out your answer. When you're finished and ready to test it, use the following values and make sure the program works. You'll test each of these one at a time and make sure to put these before your branches. So any answer you would put would just go like right here and that's gonna be where your branch, or excuse me, that's where you're gonna put the test credit score that I'll show you in just a moment. This will be the first test case that you'll try. You'll put the credit score equal to 700. The second will be 699. The third one will be 620. And the fourth one will be 619. Notice these are right on the border, right? These are right, right where they have to be to make sure that all the conditions are met. This is intentional. And this is a good way to test to make sure that, that your program can handle all the edge cases. And I'll just show you how to format it just because usually I, I would give you like a start, but I just, I want you guys from this point on to uh, practice the whole thing by yourself. I think you know enough at this point that you can at least format these on your own and you'll learn more that way. Copying what I do is not gonna be a good way to learn. Doing it yourself and using what I have as a reference is the best way to learn. So example, int example score, we'll set that score to five. If example score is greater than four, we'll do sysmat.out.println, the example is greater than four. And then we'll close that. And that's actually it. And you'll just test these, remember, you'll test these one at a time. So you put example score, so for the first test case, 700, then 699, then 620. And you're just gonna make sure that the print makes sense. And of course, you're gonna have multiple layers here, or you should have multiple layers here. That's, yeah, you, you're gonna be using this a little bit. So if you're not using else ifs, something's probably wrong. Just saying, make sure you have some else ifs and you'll probably need an else too, but that's all I'm gonna give you for hints. But yes, if you have all four of those correct, definitely, definitely give yourself a pat on the back, get yourself an apple pie because you, have just started on conditions. I wish you the best of luck on your Java, and I will talk to you guys later.